Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, the cell cycle, in which we're specifically looking at the G1S checkpoint. Okay, so so far, what we have seen is how we get into the S phase of the cell cycle. And basically, we've seen that the archetypal um, cyclin-dependent kinase in uh, the S phase of the cell cycle is this so-called SCDK, which you will more commonly see referred to as the cyclin A CDK2 complex. Okay, and we're going to see the function of this and how it alters these uh, pre-replication complexes in just one moment. So, so far, we've seen that this enzyme DDK is going to phosphorylate these MCM helicase enzymes like so. So it phosphorylates them and gets them basically ready for action. Now, the next step uh, is that um, the SCDK, or the cyclin A CDK2 complex, is going to come in and it's going to phosphorylate these CDC6 proteins. And when you phosphorylate the CDC6 proteins, Basically, so let me show them phosphorylated. Transiently, they'll be phosphorylated and still in this complex. What they do now is they dissociate away from this complex. And moreover, the CDT1 protein goes with them, basically. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is because of cyclin A, CDK2, you're going to lose CDC6, and you're also going to lose uh, CD, um, CDT1. Okay, so here is your origin of replication still. You've now got these uh, phosphorylated MCM helicase enzymes here. And uh, then you've still got the origin uh, recognition complex right at the center there. Okay, but the CDT1 uh, proteins and the CDC6 proteins have gone off. So here's the origin recognition complex, still in green, right at the center. Here's our MCM helicase enzyme in blue. Here's another MCM helicase enzyme in blue. And they're both phosphorylated, which I'll show in pink here. So they are phosphorylated. These are the phosphate groups. Now, what has happened is these two CDC6 proteins have cleaved off, basically, because they were phosphorylated by uh, the cyclin, uh, sorry, the cyclin A CDK2 complex, basically. Um, so these have cleaved off, and more than that, it gets worse for these poor CDC6 proteins. This phosphate group um, is going to target them for ubiquitination. So what's going to happen to these poor proteins is they're going to have ubiquitin added onto them. So let me just draw one now. Here's one with ubiquitin, basically, stuck onto that phosphate group, okay? And anything that gets ubiquitin uh, stuck onto it, and what color should I draw ubiquitin in? I'll draw it in green. Okay, so this is ubiquitin here in green. Anything which basically, basically gets ubiquitin stuck on it gets targeted for um, proteasomal destruction, basically. So this is a ubiquitin. Uh, molecule which we have stuck on to this um, phosphate group in pink here, which is attached to our CDC6 protein here. Okay, so this, I'll just label it all up. This is our CDC6 protein. Okay, and this process of adding a ubiquitin group onto the CDC6 is known as ubiquitination. Okay, quitination. Now, Basically, what happens is once you have a ubiquitin group on you, you are targeted for proteasomal destruction. Okay, so the proteasome is a rather formidable structure within cells where uh, proteins go in one side and amino acids come out the other end. It's like that, uh, I always think of that chicken run film uh, by Disney, I think, where it was like um, the chicken pie machine. Chickens go in one end and then the chicken pies come out the other end. Oh uh, yes, that's what I always think of when I think of the proteasome. Okay, so basically, um, this protein, this CDC6 protein, is going to go in one end and it's going to be destroyed, basically. It's going to be broken down into its amino acids. Okay, uh, so um, why? Why is this happening? Well, basically, this is very clever. 
because there's a risk, there's, a, there's something dangerous that might happen. Basically, what, what could happen is, let me draw a picture of the chromosome here. So let's say we're about to replicate this chromosome. We're making all these proteins to replicate the DNA. And what's going to happen, what we want to happen, is we want basically to end up with two copies of this chromosome. But basically, what is there to stop the, these proteins getting a little carried away? What is there to stop them copying each one's of the, one of these strands more? Again, what, what, is, the, what is there to stop uh, these protein complexes reassembling all over again and copying the DNA continuously, basically? That would be a disaster for the cell. We could end up with, you know, four pieces of DNA here. Uh, so four copies of the chromosome. So you don't want that to happen, basically. And in order to stop that, what you need to do is destroy the proteins which are involved in this. And basically, the way they do it is they destroy the protein CDC6. And without CDC6, you can't get this pre-replication complex forming. And basically, you might wonder, well, what was the point of the CDC6? Well, basically, in order for the MCM helicase enzymes to join onto this, the CDC6 enzymes had to be there, basically. So if you didn't have the CDC6 enzymes, the pre-replication, sorry, the CD6 proteins, the pre-replication complex would never have formed. So this destruction of the CDC6 proteins, after they have performed their role, is going to ensure that this, this scenario down here, excuse me, never happens. Okay, furthermore, we have also removed these um, CDT1 proteins here. Okay, so we've removed CDT1 in pink here. These are slightly more fortunate than the CDC6 proteins. They come off and basically they don't get destroyed. Instead, what they do is they associate with another protein known as geminin. So this is uh, a protein known as geminin, geminin, and basically geminin holds them nice and tightly uh, until uh, the cell cycle is finished, basically, and until, in fact, you go into the next G1 phase. So it basically stops them from, again, being part of um, a pre-replication complex on this cycle of the cell cycle. So it only lets go of them, basically, once you're in the next cycle of the cell cycle. So, geminin, again, is trying to inhibit these uh, CDT1 proteins. So, this is CDT1 in here. Okay? And it's basically to try and prevent this scenario, again, from happening. So, you've got these two sort of security measures to try and prevent over-replication of the DNA. Okay. Now, uh, that's one function of the uh, SCDK. Now what we need to discuss is another function of the SCDK. Okay, so basically the SCDK is also going to phosphorylate and activate um, a protein, well, two proteins known as SLED2 and SLED3. So let's draw these over here. So these are proteins known as SLED, SLD2 and SLED3. Okay. And basically, this cyclin A CDK2 complex is going to phosphorylate both of these. So it's going to phosphorylate SLED2 and it's going to phosphorylate SLED3. And basically, what these proteins are involved in doing is bringing in a massive great protein complex onto these, um, onto these origin of, rep of replications, basically. So let's draw this massive great complex that they're going to bring in. So they're going to bring in this massive great protein complex that is really going to open up this origin of replication and get you ready, basically, for the DNA polymerase to come in and dock. Okay, so what colour shall I colour this in? Uh, let's go for this uh, red colour. Okay, so this is basically what is known as the pre 
initiation complex. And you're going to bring two of these in. And in order to bring them in, you need the sled 2 and the sled 3 to help the pre-initiation complex in. And in order for them to actually help uh, the pre-initiation complex in, they need to be phosphorylated. And in order to be phosphorylated, they need this SCDK, or this cyclin A CDK4, uh, CDK2 rather, uh, enzyme to be uh, functioning. So this is the pre-initiation complex. So basically, SLED2 and SLED3 are going to help this, uh, well, it's going to help two of these pre-initiation complexes to come in to this origin of replication. Okay, so let's show this uh, progressing. So if this is the origin of replication here. Oh, and I haven't drawn what I needed to draw. Um, forget that. We'll draw another picture. <laughs> What's going to happen is the DNA is going to open hugely, which is what I want to show here. Okay, so it's going to basically pull those two hydrogen bonds, uh, the hydrogen bonds between the um, complementary organic bases apart, basically, and it's going to open the DNA like so. Okay, so here's the origin of, rec of uh, replication here. Right, okay, so now you have these large uh, pre-initiation complexes bound to your origin of replication here. So let's have this one here and this one here. Okay, now another thing happens when you pull the DNA apart in this way. You now ha need two uh, origin recognition complexes, basically. So you have one origin recognition complex here and one here. So you get another origin recognition complex, basically, forming. So you now have two of these origin recognition complexes, one on this DNA strand and one on this DNA strand. Okay? And uh, SLED2 and SLED3 are utterly essential for this transformation from uh, this stage up here to this stage down here. Okay, so let's draw these on. These are these pre-initiation complexes here, like so. Okay, right. And now also, uh, the DNA helicases, which were bound to both uh, strands, these MCM helicases, they now, again, are pushed onto a single strand, just like the orc was. But there are already two of those, so you don't need an extra one to come along. So one of them will remain up here, basically, with this strand. Okay, so let's have this one here. This is this MCM helicase enzyme, which I might colour in fully now, so that you can see it. Okay, so there's MCM helicase, and here is another MCM helicase enzyme down here, basically with, again, a phosphate group coming off. Okay, right. So this is an MCM helicase. So let me label everything up, basically. Right, okay. So, um, right, so this um, great big pink complex is this pre-initiation complex here, which we have brought in, and com it was completely necessary for this transformation uh, that we have the sled Two and sled free enzymes, um, well, proteins active basically. And in order to activate those, you need the SCDK. So that's why the SCDK was so essential for this transformation to happen. This is the origin recognition complex, or the ORC, and this here is this MCM helicase. MCM helicase. And basically, you are now ready uh, for uh, DNA replication to occur. You are now ready for DNA polymerase to come in and begin uh, replication, basically, in one direction. Okay, and when it's done, what you will basically have, the end result of everything, basically, is uh, that you will cop... In fact, let's keep that picture there, and then uh, we'll draw another picture here. Okay, the end result, basically, is that you'll end up with two strands of DNA, like so. And now you'll have two of these um, origin of replications. So you'll have an origin of replication on this strand, and an origin of replication on this strand, and you'll end up just with these origin of recognition complexes um, bound in exactly the same positions as they were on these two original strands, which are we're basically using as the coding strands. And they're now bound to these new two pieces of daughter DNA, if you like. Okay, so just to colour code this a little bit, um, what colours have we not used? Orange, we haven't used orange. This strand here, um, whoops, 
this strand here is um, this strand here, okay? And um, pink we haven't used either. This strand here, whoops, 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 this is awful. Right, there we go, that strand there is this strand here, basically. Okay, and these two other strands were the ones that you've synthesized, basically, with the DNA polymerase. So, that is how uh, this S cyclin dependent kinase, or this cyclin A CDK2, um, actually um, alters uh, the um, pre replication complexes in order for the uh, DNA polymerase enzyme to actually dock in and begin the replication of the DNA and uh, begin the synthesis phase of uh, the cell cycle.